again sisters it's good to have you here okay so we'll be praying for favor who knows what the theme of this conference is of this prayer launcher is yes working in God's favor and abundance so we'll be praying for favor okay so please can we turn our Bibles to second Corinthians Chapter 9, verse 8. Are we out there? So I read, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Praise God. The favor of God is key, but you know, the good thing is that as children of God, God already secured this for us when Christ went to the cross. So, you know, the interesting thing about favor is that favor ensures that you don't get what you deserve, but what God has reserved for you. So, we'll be praying this morning that, like never before, that we'll walk in God's favor and in his abundance in the name of Jesus. That the reign of God's favor, you know, when, when as the ministers were ministering and they sang, um, open the floodgate of heaven, what, what kept on going on in my mind was that God just drenched us in the rain of the abundance of your favor. So let's just pray that like, like never before, that we will walk in the abundance of God's favor. That God's favor will be on us like a fragrance. That the favor of God will set us apart. You know, because the favor of God was upon Joseph, 
God singled him out in Potiphar's out. His case was different. Even though he was a servant, but you know, he had a higher ranking compared to the other servants in Potiphar's house. So let's just pray that like never before, that we will enjoy God's favor. In the name of Jesus. Makoto sota yala braga zeta lishkanderebos kole krakata yara bazata lisha kele koto sota yala braga zeta lishka. Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that we walk in your favor and in your abundance. In the name of Jesus, that your favor will set us apart. Your favor will single us out. In the mighty name of Jesus, wherever anything concerning us surfaces, the favor of God will answer for us. In the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, we decree and declare that your favor is upon us like a fragrance. Your favor will shoot us forward like an arrow in the mighty name of Jesus as your word has come forth that this is the year of favor. Father, we enjoy and we experience your favor. We walk in divine favor in the mighty name of Jesus. The favor of God set us apart. Zash, le braga yara ba seta lishka, maka ya 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 ta sata, kele boto sota zandia, me kele boto soka yara ba zesh, kele braga zata lishka, ma ya 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 ta sata. Father, we declare that the second half of 2018 will be the better half for us because of your favor. In the name of Jesus, kele brasata ya kata soto, le broko shande re ba 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 ba, kala kata saka yara ba skenda, makala boto soka ya. Le broko kale braga zeshe yele kreseta yalaskia makanata kele bobo bolo kregeka le broshata zata yalaskia maka ya 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 ta zata le broko sota yara baseta yekete seta ta 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 sisters open your mouth and pray declare in the name of Jesus that you experience the favor of God you enjoy the favor of God like never before in the name of Jesus that the favor of God will set your path in the name of Jesus. Le broshata, kele baba bale bragazesha, kele prosota lishka, maka ya 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 tasata, kele bragato soto, le bragaseta lishka. Father Lord, as you have said it to us that this year is our year of favor. 2018 is the year of the Lord's favor and abundance. We walk in the Lord's favor and abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. The favor of God encompasses us as a shield in the name of Jesus. Kele broto soto le ba ya kata sata lishka la kranata sangea le bobo bolo brogozosh le brokoto sota yalaskea me kanata le ba 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 le bragazeta le shkande ya le koto soto declare that the favor of God rest mightily upon your family the favor of God rest upon your business the favor of God rest upon your career the favor of God rest upon your ministry in the name of Jesus le brashata Le konoto sota yaraska makaya la 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 yereboso le brogo zata lishkan dere dere ya le koto sota zosha ma ya ya ta seta bokolo brogo zata lishkan dere dere ya la koto soto ma ya ta seta ekra seta yaraskan dere bosha ma seta zata la ba 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 Father Lord we declare that the remaining months of this year. Father, we walk in your favor. We walk in your favor and abundance. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your merited favor that you bestowed upon us when your son died on the cross. We thank you, Father, for making us recipients of your favor. In the name of Jesus, kele koto soto, jata gala braga zeta lishka, manata zata, kele ba 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 le brogozosh, ye kele ba 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 ba, ye ke 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 le Zosh, le krasita lishka, ma ya 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 ta sata, kele braga zita lishka, da 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 da, ma kata sata zosh, la braga zita lishka, da 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 da, la koto sota. Father Lord, we decree and declare that every single day, from July to December, we walk in Your favor. In the name of Jesus, kele brasata, ma shata ya la braga zesh, le koko to soto, le ba 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 ya la ba zoto, le krakata. Sandia, Lakayara Basatanishka, Maya Yaya Yaya Yata Se, Le Bakoto 
Brosoto, Kele Crasita Lishka Darada, La Canata Sa, Ye Brosota Yana Bragazitalia, Kele Brogozata Lishka de Rebasa, Maya Yata Satazosh, Le Cotosota Yana Bragazesh, Makata Seta Liska, Zenderaya, La Cotosota Yana Bragazesh, La Prosota Lishka, Makata Sata Zota, La Baba Baba Baba, Father, we thank you for the grace to walk in your favor and abundance. We thank you, Almighty God. We thank you, Lord. We glorify your holy name. We thank you for counting us worthy to be recipients of your favor. Le broshata yala skenderia, kele bayata sata, kalo boto soto soto, le ba 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 yere boko, lo broko shata, yele kraseta lishka, meka yata sata zota, le ba 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 yere bazush, le braka sita lishka, zendere bos, ma ya ya yata sata zosh, le braka ta sata lishka, la ba 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 yere basota lishka, zazata yala braka zesh, kala brosota yala braka gaga, kane sata zota, ma ya kata sita lishka dereria, kolomo sota yala braka zita, ma ya ta sata zota le braka zesh, kele brogo zata lishka, ma kata sata zota, ma ya kosoto, le broko sota yala basita lishka. Zotali braga gaga gaga gaga. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the grace to work in your favor and abundance. In the name of Jesus, le bato sota. We decree and declare that wherever our name is mentioned, your favor answers on our behalf. In the name of Jesus, le koto soto, le braka ta sata lishka. My ya kosoto lo brogo zanda. My ya 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 ta sata le braga zita lishka. Yere mo. Maka sota zota yara basita lishka la ba 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 yara basoto le braka sita lishka ndereria le ba 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 yara basoto because your favor is upon our life we will not receive just what we deserve but what you have reserved for us in the name of Jesus le braseta ma ya koto sota lishka makata sata zota le braga ga yara basota le braga zesh le koto sota yara braga zesha ma ya ta zota zota makata Sita Lishka Dereria, Le Brozondo, Ebraka Sita Yarabazita, Kekekete Sita Lishka, declare that in every facet of your life you will walk in the Lord's favor. In the name of Jesus, you are a child of destiny, you are a child of God. You will not walk contrary to the favor of God concerning your life. It has been written concerning you that the Lord's favor is your portion. You walk in that favor from now on. In the name of Jesus. Kato sota yalaskia, kele brogo zasha, kala baba bato soto, kele brogo zata, yele krasita lishka, ma ya kata zata, keke keke te sendere boso, lo bro shata zata, ma ya 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 ta sita zosh, le krasita lishka ndara basata, ma kata zata zota, le braga zesh, le baba baba bato sota zande geba, le krasota lishka ndere rea, le koko lo brogo zandia, ma koto sota yana basita, Ye kele braga zita lishka Zata zota yana braga zesha Le braga zita yana basota Maka neda rebo soto zota lishka Lakata zata We decree and declare that the favor of God Encompasses us as a shield in the name of Jesus Wherever we step into the favor of God We set us apart in the name of Jesus Le bro shata galeska Zota le braga gaga yana basosh Le bo sota yana braga zesha Kele kasita zota lishka Zata Andara bosa, makata sata yala braga zesh, le koto sota yala braga zesha, kele basata zota, ye kele keke keke te sende, le brogo zata lishka, zato. Yeah, concerning the remaining days of this year, from July till December, that by the reason of God's favor, that the second half of 2018 will be the better half for us in all aspects and ramifications of our lives, in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that we will walk in your favor and abundance. And that by, as a result of that, your favor will set us apart. The second half of 2018 will be the better half for us. It will be the better half for every member of our family. It will be the better half for our nation, Nigeria. It will be the better half for the body of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, by, because of your favor upon our lives, we receive that grace to win souls for you like never before in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we walk in your favor, our lives will reveal and reflect your glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, let's be seated in God's presence. Good morning, everyone. Once again, um, I'm excited, really delighted to be here. And I'm sure everyone here is excited to be here as well. Okay? Um, pleased to meet you all, beautiful faces. I'm seeing beautiful faces, those that I have met before, some new faces, but all beautiful faces. Um, this is Deborah Initiative for Women, DIW. So for those of you that are wondering, what does DIW mean? It means Deborah Initiative for Women. And um, on behalf of our president, Adibola Dejikomi, she's in the US um, on an undercover mission, like we call it. Um, she's doing the will of the Father, and she's doing well. She sends her greetings, okay? Um, the Abraham Initiative for Women is a ministry with a mandate to raise strong women for God by the word and by the spirit of faith. It is an assignment to help women on their journey to finding purpose. Thank you for coming this morning, and I'm sure that you will find purpose in this place. Um, Deborah Initiative for Women helps women to find strength and find hope. We pray together, we worship together, we are friends. We have a strong support system. Like, uh, we tell ourselves, it is not allowed. Like, it can't happen, not on my watch, you know? Something wrong cannot happen on my watch. That is what we do in DIW. So you see pretty faces, but then loaded, like loaded. Like, you don't allow the enemy to just mess around with you or with people you know. So in DIW, you see beautiful faces, but fierce women in the spirit. So we don't allow nonsense. We don't take nonsense. We don't take no for an answer. So it has to work. The word has to work in our lives in DIW, and it is working. We encourage one another, and we grow and mature together in the faith. Our mission is to raise strong women of God by building an internal system of partners. So we usually have, we recruit partners several times in a year. We have partners join us. That's the internal system. And then we also do this by building an ex external community of believing women into stronger women of God, into stronger women of God through our outreaches and programs, just like um, prayer luncheon that we're having right now. Our outreaches include God's Great Girls Network. This is an exciting outreach to ladies in higher institutions of learning. Our desire is to see young, vibrant Christian women who are drawn into a deep walk with God in the midst of contemporary considerations. Also, prayer luncheon for women, as we're here right now. We're having a, it's a prayer assembly where we strengthen ourselves, our spirit, and refresh our fires and connect with other sisters through faith confessions. We're going to be taking a lot of faith confessions this morning. And um, we have Damsel's Academy, which is a resource center for high school st students, girls, between the ages of 13 and 19. Okay, we also have Deborah's Camp, Upstream, and um, uh, Upstream is usually our annual conference for women in ministry, enterprise, and development where spiritual principles and strategies for acceleration in the marketplace are thought. So in DIW, we are really all-rounded. It's not just the fire, spiritual, you know, we take it to the marketplace, we take it to our jobs, we take it to our businesses, everything we do is on fire for the Lord. And um, this morning, I would like to welcome those of you that are worshiping with us here for the first time in DIW. If you are if this is your first time in a DIW event, please get up. We want to celebrate you. We want to, we want to shake your hand. We want to hug you. <laughs> DIW partners, please give them a warm hug, a beautiful smile. Thank you, sisters, for coming. God bless you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for leaving everything behind to come and enjoy the presence of God together. Welcome, beautiful women. Thank you. <laughs> ah, thank you, sisters. Thank you. 
Thank you for coming. Thank you. Please be seated. We, would, we have gotten your details and we will reach out to you. We'll send you emails, we'll send you text messages. Thank you for coming. We really appreciate your presence in this place. Please put, our hands, put your hands together for them. Now, if you need to use the restroom, the convenience, it's um, at the back, at the back of you, to my left. That's the restroom, so you can freely use that. Okay, so I'm going to take this short time to thank all partners, all the IW partners. Please, can you say, yay, yay. <laughs> thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. We have been praying for this. We have been praying for months. We thank God that prayer luncheon is here. And we are glad that, what? Exactly. We are glad that, we are so, so sure and glad that God is here in this place. And he has promised us, he said, we are not living here the same. Everyone is not living. Nobody is, can live here the same way we came. He's giving us gifts, handing us gifts as we step out and as we have a wonderful time in his presence. Okay, so um, we're going to start with um, confessions. We're going to take our confessions. Yes, we don't take confessions lightly. You might ask me, what is confession? After all, I'm not a witch. What do I have to confess? Huh? Right? Some people, so when people hear confession, you're like, oh, ah, no, I don't have anything to confess. Because you know all those stories of when... Uh, somebody wants to die and she has been a witch and then she now starts confessing I'm the one that did this. That's not the kind of confession we do. We, we are alive and we confess. We, we, we say the word of God okay? Now, who can tell me what the word of God this world was created with? Can I hear you? The word good. I thought someone was going to say cement and blocks and um, sticks and wood what was this world created with? Word. word. So how can, how, does it make sense for the word you say to build something? Does it make sense? Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense naturally, but we are not natural people. Hmm? So there is a way we operate in our own kingdom. We are from a certain kingdom. And in that our kingdom is our word, the word of our mouth that we use to build things. We don't wait for carpenter to say, okay, let's build this uh, house. No, we use, our, we use our mouth to build houses. We use, our, we use our mouth to get married. We use the words of our mouth to get anything we want because it is so cheap. It is free. You can say what you want with your mouth. God has given all of us that opportunity. Say whatever you like with your mouth, but just ensure that you're saying the right thing. So this morning, we are going to speak God's word. The Bible says um, in Psalm 41, verse 1, it says that your tongue is like, my tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. A ready writer. Okay. There was this, um, there's this um, translation of the Bible that I got. It's actually my children's Bible. And I love it. It says that the, that the tongue... Your tongue is like the pen of a skilled writer. So imagine a skilled writer. You're a skilled writer now. You take a pen and then you begin to write. And the Bible says it's not a pen. Like it's your tongue that is that pen. Your tongue, your own tongue that is that pen. So today, just hold your mouth and say, my, my mouth, you are now a pen. Yes, that is your pen. That is a pen. You have it there. God has given you a pen. So everything you say with that pen is being written down. It's a decree. You are saying it. It has to come to pass. It must come to pass. Because you are saying it. You know when you write something, you go back and you see it, right? You see that it's already there, right? So the words of your mouth are that powerful. This world we see was created with the word of God. So we're going to start this morning, and you will repeat after me as I, as I make the confession. So we're focusing on the Esther favor. 
the Esther fable. How many of you know that Esther really enjoyed <laughs> serious fable? She had no parents. She had nothing. She was an orphan. And she was married to the king. Ahasuerus <laughs> was the ruler of 127 provinces. Let's imagine, that is even bigger than the president of America in this day. Like, 127 provinces, all the way from India. India to Europe. He was the king of the world. You that, imagine just one girl that does not have mother, does not have father. And the Bible says that when she got to the king's palace, that everyone she met just liked her. They didn't know why, but they just liked her. And one interesting thing about the book of Esther is that they didn't even mention the name of God in that book. <laughs> they were not even saying in the name. They didn't have Jesus. They were not saying, hey, in the name of Jesus. They didn't have Jesus. They didn't mention, the, they didn't mention God in the book of Esther. But God decided to, to do what? To favor someone. Someone that was not qualified. Who is Esther? So, you know, I was just imagining that the people that were friends, um, all the king's advisors, they would go, they would bring their own children. Can you imagine that? They would bring their own children because those were the qualified ones. They would bring their children and say, ah, she finished from Harvard. She's actually meant to marry the king. She speaks this. She speaks that. Please, she is the rightful person. Take her to the king. But God had prepared someone, someone that, that, that in all areas, she was not qualified. That is what the favor of God does. God is in the miracle. He's still in the business of doing miracles. So we're going to take the confessions with meaning. Remember, your mouth is a pen. Use your mouth is a pen. And everything you say with your mouth, you will see. You will see. Our mouth is so powerful, very powerful. I remembered many years ago, um, I was in one relationship and I used to tell the guy that my children will attend the, the coroners of this day. Yeah, I used to tell him, like, I didn't even know I was still in the university, but I used to say that my children were going to go to the best schools. They would do this, they would do that. And it looked like, are you okay? You that, I know sometimes when I tell the guy, the guy would tell me like, ah, you know you don't have money, you know? And then, but I knew that. <laughs> You might not have money, but me, I have money. You might not be seeing it, but I have money. And I knew that my life was more than what I was seeing at that point. So, we were in a relationship. Eventually, what happened? God took him out of my life. And then everything I used to say, I have it. So, the words you say, they're very powerful. Don't just look at it and say, oh, ah, <laughs> this is recession. <laughs> Oh God, everybody is facing it. Everybody can face it, but you are not allowed to face it. So those are the words we must be mindful of the things we say. You cannot afford to go through what everybody is going through because you operate from a different kingdom. Amen? Amen. Okay, so are we ready? Okay. Father, I thank you because... You have raised me from the dung hill and set me among the princes of the earth. Thank you because you have taken me from the miry clay and set my feet upon solid ground. That which was rejected by the builders has now become the cornerstone. Thank you because you are the God of my life. And when my soul was overwhelmed, you led me to a higher rock. It is your favor that takes an orphan maiden in a strange land from poverty to prosperity and from a hidden identity to global fame. Today, I stand in the God kind of faith. And confess that that with and confess that with God, confess that with God all, things are all things are possible. 
and there shall nothing be impossible. I declare that regardless of the pain I have faced, I have yet witnessed a better day. Regardless of the limitations I have known, I have yet laid hold on a glorious possession. I have known a turnaround that no man could have given me. By the favor of the Almighty, I am in line for this goodness. For it is the Lord who has called me from my father's house to bless me and to fasten me as a nail in a secure place. I declare that the mistakes of others have become God's scheme to prosper my lot and change my status. In the moment of grace, I am transformed from a small person to a commander of international dynasties. It is known unto me. It is unto me, sorry. It is unto me according to grace and not time. In this season of God's goodness, I have been handpicked to sit in the company of rulers. And their aides show me kindness. What I do not know because of my restricted knowledge, exposure, and experience have been revealed to me by those who understand the ways of the palace. Now, I have been selected and called in. I am no longer an outsider to the wealth that the Lord has set before me. With godly character and preparation, I am chosen above all others beyond natural considerations and physical parameters. The force of divinity has appointed me a better place than I deserve. The lines have fallen onto me in desired places. And I have an admirable heritage. For it is the Lord who maintains my lot and secures my portion. I divide spoils with the mighty and I eat of the fatness of the earth. I am surrounded by helpers who lighten my body and color my life. As a result of God's preordination, I am consecrated to God's revealed purpose and fully obey his orders. In the hour of battle, I am not a weak specimen. And I do not fret in the day of war. By cleverness and courage, I have faced the giants confronting me and God's people, winning the victory for holy generations. The gallows arranged for me have swallowed my adversaries. And I ride on the affluence of those who hate God's name. <laughs> The Lord has made the diviners mad. And their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Therefore I triumph over evil. Because I have honored the will of God. And kept his precept. His praise is sung in many continents. And the name of tribute has been reserved for me. Among the, Among the saints. This is my time to be remembered for good. The doors are now open to me. And the king's signet is lifted to my advantage. Hallelujah.
Glory. Please, let's dance to that. Let's dance to that. Let's dance to what you have written with your mouth. Woo! Glory. Glory to Jesus. Wow. Thank you. So let's do this over and over again. You might not, you, it looks like you're crazy. Sometimes, even when people are there, you say it. Sometimes you say it under your breath. Sometimes let it look as if something is going on there. But you know that the results will follow. God is such a faithful God. He never, have you ever seen someone that said, oh, look at me. My life is destroyed because I followed God. Huh? It doesn't happen. Our God is a faithful God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, please let's be seated. Thank you. Okay, it's time for the word. Can somebody say the word? The word. The word. The word. It's time for the word. Now, it's a delight. Um, I'm so excited and delighted, really, because um, of the way God is working in our midst. Um, yes, I'm sure some of you might be wondering, oh, where is Pastor Milola? Yes, she's not here today. But God has ordained someone from the beginning of this meeting. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. God has ordained someone from the beginning of this meeting. And we are glad. We are so, so glad. Um, the, our name is, um, our speaker for today, our word minister is Pastor Bukola Ogunwale. Please put your hands together. It's not yet time for her to come up. Uh, <laughs> She's, she has this very unassuming face, yes, but don't be deceived. Um, I read um, something from Mike Mudok, and he said that um, it's wisdom that makes us know that um, um, all men are not the same. It's wisdom. So there are some people that you see and you honor them because there is a grace on their life. She is that kind of a person. She is my friend. Even though she's my friend, I don't, I have to honor her because I know she's anointed. And I'm not saying that because it's here. No. I tell her this. She's an anointed woman of God. And she's one of those people that I know. I have this sense. God has given me sense to know that, okay, this one, eh, she's not um, the ones that you just feel, she's not everybody. So you have to honor her. And I'm so excited and glad that she's the one bringing us God's word this morning. Um, Bukola Ogunwale is a lawyer by training. She's a social, she's a serial entrepreneur. She has, she has co-founded several businesses and is a business clarity coach. It's, all of this I'm saying is just undercover, actually. <laughs> she's an under, she's, she's blessed, she's anointed, yes. She believes in intentional living, and she believes it's a major key to achieving a life of purpose and proofs. Her passions include singing, healthy living, writing, and journaling. Healthy living, I call her Coach B. She's a coach. She's a fitness coach. Um, she, 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 she has co-found, she co-founded iFitness Gym worldwide. <laughs> International Coach B. <laughs> um, she's married to the love of her life, and God has blessed them with two handsome boys. Please put your hands together for Mrs. Nicola Ugwale. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can we sing? Open the floodgates. In abundance, cause you rain to fall on me.
You know, as we worshipped earlier on, the Holy Spirit said to me that there are people here and you feel like what you're carrying is bigger than a cross. Like, you don't even know how to carry it. Like, it's weighing you down. And as we worshipped, he came and he carried it for you. from there, then it's fine. Okay. So, I want to appreciate the Bra Initiative for Women. I came to this house in a season when I needed friends. And God has blessed me with more than friends in this house. He has given me family. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, people. I want to thank Pastor Deborah. And we appreciate the grace of God upon her. And we pray that our path is that of the just that shines brighter and brighter onto the glorious day. I want to thank Mrs. Elizabeth Ajetumobi, my family head. <laughs> I want to thank um, Pastor Deola, Director Deola. She had to go somewhere else to another region. But thank you so much for organizing this. Thank you so much for bringing us together. And we pray that your reward is great in Jesus' name. Thank you to everyone that serves in one capacity or the other. Hi, Bambi. 
Thank you so much. God is our eternal reward. So we're just going to go into it. And we're talking about working in God's favor and abundance. So one of the things I like to do is to pick every um, description from the word of God. Because, I mean, as we know, as we have heard again and again today, the word of God is strong, it is powerful, and it is effective. So what is favor? According to the word of God, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2. I'm, I'm reading from the NIV version. He says, for he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. So God is saying to us that if you want to know what favor is, then this is what happens in the time of favor. In the time of favor, that's when I hear you. So when God hears you, then it is your time of favor. And then he says that that day that God hears you and favors you is the day of salvation. How many people have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, that's what I guessed, practically everybody. So the moment we were saved, we received favor from God. On the day of our salvation, we received favor. So that truth must sit well with us. It must settle into us that that day that they said, if you want to receive Jesus into your life, would you come out? Or would you raise your hand? Or would you stand up? And I stood up to be counted as one of God's own. That day, I received God's favor. Then, that verse now went on to say, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. So in case 15, 20 years ago, we didn't realize it, that I actually received favor then, no. Then the Bible is telling us that now is the day of salvation. So if you came with the mind that, let me go and pray. Maybe if I pray today, before this year is over, God will hear me. God is saying, no, now is the day of salvation. And now is the time of favor. So God wants to hear you now, 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 now. He wants to do it now, 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 now. Okay? So the word salvation comes up so many times that I had to go and check what it means. And the Greek word for it is sozo. I'm sure Bible students here, they know that. S-O-Z-O. So, sozo. And then by the time I started to read about that word, I saw that it had multiple meanings. So, sozo has multiple meanings. And there are about five that I have written here. The first one says, when you have salvation, when you have sozo, you are saved. You are whole. You are healed. You are preserved. And you are well. So on that day that you were saved, you were not only saved, you were made whole. You were healed. You are preserved. And you are well. So everything is wrapped up in that word salvation. Whether it's healing physically, spiritually, it is in that word. Whether it is so, so, I started to think about the word wholeness. How is it different from healing? And a story that my pastor told us came to mind. And it is in the Bible. It is the story of the ten lepers. And, you know, he said, when that one leper came back to say thank you, Jesus said to him, you're made whole, all ten of them. Then one came back and Jesus said, you are made whole. 
And you know when lepers, um, when people are leprous, their limbs are eaten. Like the disease eats their limbs. So when Jesus healed them, the disease was stopped. He could not eat their limbs anymore. So maybe someone had lost three fingers to that disease. The moment he was healed, the other two fingers could not. And then when he came back to be made whole, whole So, salvation does not just mean healing. It doesn't mean that the, the battle is stopped at the gate. It means that everything that the devil thought he had taken away, restored. restored. And God is saying now, today, is the day of restoration. And that the, this day of salvation and restoration is the day of his favor. And that is the definition of favor. So the moment you're walking in favor, you know that everything that the devil thought he had stolen, that you thought the devil had stolen, is restored. Okay? Also, I started to, to search. So when salvation means preservation, because that's one of the definitions. When it means preservation, what does that mean? Then the story that DDK told us came to mind. That it was one of those ASU strikes in the university, and a sister prayed. I don't know if she said she came to pray with her good and evil. So when God created Adam, he planted a garden, and he called it a place of utter delight. He called it a garden of delight. And I'm here to tell you this morning that the moment you were saved and Christ redeemed you into Abraham's blessings, which was a restoration of Adam's initial garden, then God gave to you your Eden. And your Eden is a garden of utter delight. It is a beauty. It is of luxuriant beauty. It is of nourishing food. It is great. It is beyond what you can ever imagine. And each of us has our garden. You have your Eden. I have my Eden. Everybody has it. We all have it. Okay? And if we look at... Verse 15. It says that the eternal God placed the newly made man in the garden of Eden in order to walk the ground and care for it. So you're Eden, you're supposed to walk that ground and care for it. And as you walk it and care for it, it will bring forth fruits. It will bring a yield. It will bring a harvest for you. Okay? A lot of people they want to claim the promises, but they don't want to do the work that is required to enter into Eden. So the moment that God starts to show you your Eden and starts saying that this is your inheritance, this is your portion among my people, this is where I want you to thrive and prosper, this is what I want to hand over to you, we should get up and work it. Just work it. Just work it. Sometimes in the place of worship or when the world is going on, God is whispering to you and saying to you, this is what I want to give you. I want to make you so, so person. This is the name that I've called you. So if he says to you, I've called you a minstrel and you have never sang in your life, what should you do? Find out who, who has a music school and go and learn. Go and learn. Because he has called you that. He has said that is you. So the, 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 the painful thing is that maybe someone is in paid employment, salary is steady, it's coming in, 
And then God is telling you that I've called you, um, I don't even know the example to use, but imagine that God says, I'm giving to you the transport industry. I'm giving it to you for an inheritance. And then the person writes that down in their diary or their journal, but they still keep going to work every day, collecting the steady salary, year one, year two, year three, year four. Time is going. And she's not doing anything about that thing that God has said to her. Now, I'm not saying resign immediately. I'm not saying wait for five or ten years. That is between you and God. But the moment he gives you that name, or he tells you that thing that he has reserved for you, start finding out about it. Draw a roadmap to get in there. Have a timeline that the week one, I'll go and find out all the transporters that exist. Week two, I'll find out their strategies. Week three, I'll do this, I'll do that. So that even though you are still resuming at the steady work, you are working on that thing that God, you're tilling your ground, you're tilling your Eden, you're watering it. And it is not done by yourself. It is with the help of the Holy Spirit. So you are praying over it. As you're praying, you're allowing the Holy Spirit to brood over it. And then he's saying, let there be light. And then light is coming, illumination is coming. You're having clarity. You're knowing more about it. Then when you go to their office to make inquiries, you find out that the same things, even deeper things that the Holy Spirit has told you in your quiet time, is similar to what they're operating. Yeah? So, if, and there's nobody's inheritance that is little. You can't even begin to compare and say, my own is little compared to this person. Work it and see God blow it open. See God expand it. So what is the secret? I think this is my best part of, um, <laughs> of today. The secret to that garden is this. In verse 10, he says, A river flowed from Eden to irrigate the garden. And from there it separated into four smaller rivers. The first, the Pishon, flows around the land of Havila, a rich land, plentiful in gold of premium quality, delium and oink stones. The second, the Gion, flows around the entire land of Kush, and it still talks about all the other rivers. But it says that in that your Eden, in that your garden, there is a river that flows in the land of Havila, and it is gold. There's gold in your land. Do you believe it? Are you sure? There's gold in your land. There's gold. There's precious stones. There's precious stones in your land. And your river is not just... Jesus says that if anyone believes in me, out of the belly shall flow... Plural. Rivers. It's not just one river. The river in Eden, it forked into four, four rivers. So which of your rivers have you discovered? Have you discovered any of your rivers? How do you discover your rivers? Let the Holy Spirit brood over you. Spend time with the Holy Spirit. Time spent with the... The Bible says we should fellowship with the Father and we should fellowship with Jesus Christ. Then it says we should have communion with the Holy Spirit. Communion is a deeper level of fellowship. It's a deeper level of fellowship. If you're not doing your day, you're not having steady conversations with the Holy Spirit as if he's right beside you, of which he's right inside you, then you're not yet communing with him. Every moment of every day, you're driving, you're in the bus, you're even having a talk with someone and the Holy Spirit is whispering stuff to you and you're finding it funny. 
And sometimes he's telling you, you shouldn't have done that or you should have done that. So we must get to that point where we're having communion with the Holy Spirit. And it is in those communion moments that he is showing you your rivers. And the moment he shows you one river, you let it flow. You let it flow. As it's flowing, it shows you another one. Oh, let it flow. Don't restrict. I hope this is not too theoretical for us. What I hope and I pray is that as we're saying these things, your rivers are coming to your mind. And you're remembering the things that he has spoken to you before of yourself, the names that he has called you by. And you are going back to those plans to work them, to work them. Because sometimes what he's calling you is even so different. And sometimes it is what you're doing, oh, but he's calling you the financial savior of the banking industry. And you're like, I'm just a teller. I'm just a teller, sir. How? But if he says that, then go and find out what are the professional qualifications that I need to get to the next level, to move from being a teller to being the next thing, the next thing. Then you become the head of department because you are skilling yourself up for what he has called you for. And then the moment that he is ready to blow it open, you are prepared yourself. Because there is an evil when God calls somebody by a name and they waste time instead of preparing themselves. And then the moment that God wants to open up the heavens over them, that opportunity does not meet with preparation. And then the circle starts all over again. It is what made the children of Israel spend 40 years for a 40 days journey. Because God had prepared the land. In fact, he took Moses to the top of the mountain. He said, look at the land. He says, it's beautiful. And then they said to them, oh yeah, enter. They say, eh? Enter where? This place. Look at the giant in there. Ha. So they didn't enter. And God said to them, in fact, all the people that went with Joshua and Caleb, they they were immediately executed by the Lord. It's in the Bible. And then God said, all you other people that received their report and owned it, you will not see that land. And so for 40 years, they were growing old and dying until they were all gone. Then God said, oh yeah, new generation, enter. So what is your land of promise? Which part of it has God shown you? Have you started taking steps to entering it? Because that, that, that is the key to favor and abundance. That is the key. That is the key. There's no shortcut. There's no, there's no other way. There's no other way. Oh. There's nothing else. The moment God shows and prayerfully executing it, taking a step at a time. And your teacher is not far from you. He will tell you. You will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. He will tell you, oh yeah, take one step in this direction. Oh yeah, turn left. Oh yeah, turn right. Oh yeah, stand up. Sit down. And as he's saying it, if we will just obey and have faith and do the things, he says, wear this, do that. And we just do it. You will just look up one day and you see that you are in your promised land. But sometimes we want to see everything before we take the first step. You want to see how it all adds up. You want to know. You are like, no, no, no. It's not making sense. But does it make spirit? If it makes spirit, then you better let's do it. Because the flesh profits nothing. <laughs> oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, as I begin to round up, I want to encourage you to fall in love again with the Holy Spirit. 
I want to implore you to love upon him because it's the secret. It's the secret. Is that river that Ezekiel 47 spoke of. There's a river in you. There are rivers in you. And then the Holy Spirit is a river. So as the, when you believe in Christ, as your river bubbles up, your rivers bubble up, then the rivers of the Holy Spirit carry you. And the Holy Spirit begins to take you over. If you're not ready to lose control, it will be tough to walk in favor and abundance. The kind of favor and abundance that God wants to give us so if we're not ready to lose control to the Holy Spirit and not only sing that song that have your way, but really let him have his way. Even when it doesn't make sense, you are resigning and everybody is saying, ah, ah. but you just got promoted. Now, why are you resigning? But you know that he told you, go and resign and go and do this and do that. Or sometimes you are even a, a thriving entrepreneur and he says, go and take a paid employment. But if we are ready to lose control to him and to let him have his way, then that river will not only be to our ankle. How many people know that Bible passage that says that the river flows to your ankle, then it flows to the, to the waist, and then it becomes a river that is, you can swim in. Some people want to stay at the ankle level because they know that if anything happens like this, they can quickly run back to the shore. <laughs> I say this one that Holy Spirit is telling me strange things. I don't know what to do. I don't know. Let me not go and hook. I don't know how to swim. You don't need to know how to swim. It is in you to swim in the waters of the Spirit because you are a spirit. You are a spirit. So your spirit has the capacity to swim in the waters of the Holy Spirit. Some people will venture. Get to waist length and say, ha, this is comfortable enough. I have a bit of the abundance. I have a bit of the favor. Everything is going well. I can feed my family. Sometimes I can even help one or two people. Let me just stop here. But what God really wants is that vision that Ezekiel saw. That we must swim in that river. We must swim in that river. And then let's read what happens when we swim in that river. This is so exciting. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. For Ezekiel 47. <laughs> From verse 6. <laughs> he asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah. When it enters the sea, when it empties into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. This is talking about the Dead Sea. This is talking about the Dead Sea. And he's saying that when the waters of this river enter the Dead Sea, it becomes fresh. Isn't this amazing? Like when your rivers, once they are taken over by the Holy Spirit, when they flow into any dead situation, freshness comes. Life comes. Healed. He heals the waters of the dead sea. So there's a dead situation at work. They don't know what to do with it. And they dump it on your table because they know that Nobody has been able to make sense of it. 
then you heal it. You make it fresh. And then you become the star. And they're like, where did she come from? How? When? Who knew her? Can we see her CV? Can we see her references? And they don't see anything there. That is favor. That is abundance. Because you have allowed the rivers of the Holy Spirit to overwhelm you. Yeah? So what else did he say? He says, swarms of living creatures will live wherever the rivers, the river flows. So, very great multitude of fish. That's what this version says, ASV. He says there will be a great multitude of fish everywhere this river flow. So there will be multitude of creatures, fishes. What is fish? Fish is food now. And it could be commerce because there will be fishermen who sell. So he says there will be abundance where this river flows, where your rivers flow, where the rivers of the Holy Spirit carry you. There will be abundance. There will be multitude of life. There will be multitude of fishes. He says that hmm, fishermen, let's read further. There will be large number of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So, have you seen maybe someone, sometimes we see it in videos, someone is, um, is maybe there's a boat or a ship and it is stranded on salt water and they're surrounded by water but they're thirsty because they can't drink salt water. But God is saying that sometimes it looks like there's abundance around you but you can't taste it. Your hand cannot touch it. And God is saying as, the, as this river flows into it, the waters become fresh. And then you can take some and drink. You can take some and take a bath. You can even swim in it. That's what God is saying here. So it makes the salt water fresh. And where the river flows, everything will live. Does this look like our first definition of abundance? Where he says everything. It's not just some things. It's not just a few. Everything will live. So the Holy Spirit is, is the secret to it all. Do we see? Fishermen will stand along the shore from Engedi to Englem. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. All right? And God is saying here that, you're saying that I'm alone. There's nobody to help me. I don't really have people I can call to assist me. He's saying that fishermen will stand side to side on the shores of your river. You will have people. Men will build your walls. Amen. Before you call one person, a thousand people will answer you. Amen. That's what God is saying to us here. And he says that the swamps and the marshes, they will not become fresh, but they will be left for salt because there's still a need for salt. Remember? We're the salt of the earth. So we will still have what it takes to sweeten everything. To sweeten the world. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. <laughs> on both banks. So it is not, oh, my marriage is doing well, but I don't really understand what's going on with my career. Oh, I'm doing so well with career, but man never come home. Oh, Marriage is great, career is great, but these children, hmm, no. He says on both banks of your river, there will be fruits. So in every area of your life, there will be fruits. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow. Your leaves will not wither. Your fruits will not fail. 
Every month you will bear, you will bear fruit. Because the water from the sanctuary flows to you. The fruit will serve for food and the leaves for healing. A version says it's for healing of the nations. So those nations, this nation that we are sent to, we are to heal it. And it is the water that flows from the sanctuary that feeds into us, then comes out of the pipe on the other side and heals the nation and gives us spirits and the bride say, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes to take the water of life without cost, let them come. And we say we come, we drink our fill from the abundance of the Lord's rivers in Jesus' name. Amen. So would you rise up and let us pray about what we have heard this morning. I know that there are different aspects of what we have learned that talks to each person. So just begin to talk to God about what you've heard. Begin to recollect to mind the names that the Lord has called you. The promises that he has made to you, the covenant blessings that he has assured you, that he gave you with salvation. He will come and save you. You save you. Say to the weary one, your Lord will surely come. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Asia, the Liga, those who run the Liga, Namakosi, Tana, 
to where you're coming from. You don't know how to get there anymore. So you feel stuck. But God is saying, I am, Jesus is saying, I'm the way. And he wants to lead you out of that desert land into a land that is flowing with milk and honey. So he says to you to start to begin to look within you because the answer that you seek in your surroundings, they are inside from that river of life flowing within you. Also, if there are people here and you feel that your life is a constant war zone, like you keep struggling for stuff, and the moment you feel that you are going to achieve this one, somebody else comes and snatches it. Or somebody is struggling to even collect something that you feel that finally I can have this one. And God is saying he wants to give you peace. And he wants to hand over to you your own inheritance. And that he will make all your enemies as still as stone until you get into the land of your promise. Okay? And then there are people here. You are just tired. You are just, just plain tired. You don't even want to struggle anymore. You don't even want to try anymore. You are just... You just want to throw in the towel. You are tired of dreaming dreams that don't happen. You're tired of fighting. You're tired of trying. And God is saying that he wants to infuse you with courage. He wants to come to you as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He wants to, he wants, to he wants you to roar from within you. Okay? And then for everyone no, there's someone actually and you are in a land tussle. There's a land that is supposed to be yours. You paid for it. You bought it. But there's a tussle. There's a war on it. And God is saying, The earth is the Lord and its fullness thereof. So what is rightfully yours is restored in Jesus' name. You're trusting God for the fruit of the womb. 
is saying that I gave you the blessing, the covenant of seed in Abraham. He says, look up at the stars. He says, can you count them? He says, your offsprings will be as numerous as the uncountable stars. And we declare that everything that the Lord has not planted is uprooted today in Jesus' name. If you feel that God is no longer interested in your story, in your situation, that you can't even see him anymore. God is saying, I'm right there. I'm right there. And the periods when you look at the back and you can't see two sets of footprints is because I'm carrying you. So begin to pray a blessing into your neighbor's life. Begin to declare a blessing upon them this morning that they are blessed beyond a cause. Pray into their lives that everything that they lay their hands upon prospers. Pray into their lives that the rivers of their life flow of your life flow. Everything that you do prospers. Greatness is in you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. With joy you draw from the wellsprings of salvation. The rivers of life bubble up within you. The rivers of the Holy Spirit overwhelm you. They take you over. You wade into it. You come, it comes to your eyes it comes to your knee, it comes to your waist, you swim in it. In the name of Jesus, fishermen, they come. Men build your walls. On the banks of your rivers, there are trees. The leaves of your tree are for healing of the nations. In the name of Jesus, the fruits of your trees are good for eating. Everything you do prospers. Your Eden is a luxuriant garden. You are a planting of the Lord himself. The Lord waters you. You bring forth your fruit in season. In the name of Jesus. Everything you lay your hands upon prospers. The favor and the abundance of the Lord is upon your life. You will not be able to shake off the favor. with you. He says in blessing I will bless you. He swears by himself. He says in blessing I will bless you. He says your inheritance will, your, your inheritance will be great. Your sons, they will inherit nations for an inheritance. He says that men build your walls. Every one of your work is blessed. Everything you lay your hands upon is blessed. You are blessed beyond the cost. You are blessed beyond the cost. As the Lord begins to show you the strategies, the roadmap to your place of abundance and favor, we declare that your ears are open to hear your teacher. As you hear your teacher, we declare that you obey. We declare that your obedience is 100%. It is instant. It is absolute. That all so big and all so tall, big and all so. We declare that a new era has started for you in God today. And everything that is written of you in the volume of the books, it comes to pass speedily. We declare that now is the day of salvation. And everything that the mouth of the Lord has spoken today is established today in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. You can leave your neighbors and I begin to thank the Lord for what has shifted today. Let's just give thanks to God for what has shifted in our lives today. Let's thank God because He has laid the foundation for the next decade of greatness in your life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love you forever.
want some more? Just a bit more? Amen. Amen. The Bible says the, effect, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous woman availed much. It says it makes tremendous power available, which is dynamic in its working. Hallelujah. I want to quickly look at one or two scriptures. I have quite some, but, you know, just because of time. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verses 12 to 14. We will be praying for abundance. Deuteronomy 28. Verses 12. So I'll read quickly. Um, okay. It says, and the Lord will, um, um, okay, let me quickly, let me change this translation to NIV. It says, the Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty. Remember, we're talking about favor and abundance. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. It says you will lend to many nations but will borrow from none. That's abundance. Let me go ahead. It says the Lord will make you the head, not the tail. You will, if you pay attention to the commands of the Lord and all of that, it says you will always be at the top and never at the bottom. Amen. Let me read it in message translation just to bring it home, you know, in you know, contemporary day English. It says God will lavish you with good things. Amen. Children from your womb, offspring from your animals, Amen. crops from your land. Amen. That's the land that God promised your ancestors. He says God will throw open the doors of his sky vaults and pour rain on your land on schedule and bless the work you take in your hand. Amen. That means the work of your hands and the hands of your work. The things that money can buy and the things that money cannot buy. That's what he's talking about. He says he will make you the head, not the tail. You will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Hallelujah. That's abundance. So in line with what we have heard, bless God for the word that has come to us, I want you to take it a little higher. Amen? I want us to pray for ourselves. He says in Deuteronomy chapters 1, he says the Lord by God will make you a thousand, will bless you a thousand times more. That's abundance. So in that area you are, Beyond even the area you are expecting God to do something. He says he is able to do exceedingly abundantly and far above. All that you ask or imagine. So much so that even when it comes to a point where there are some things you want to say, but in your heart you are afraid. Can he do this? He said he goes beyond that. Beyond what you can ask or even think. He's able to do way more than that. I want us to open our mouth and pray this morning, this afternoon. It's past one. For just five minutes. For five minutes. He says he will open the, his, his, the heavens and pour to you of his good treasure. You will have enough to give out. So that the impact is felt beyond you. It goes down to generations to come. You are not just able to take care for yourself. You are able to meet the needs of those around you. Madali kaya balosha. Balege yene breke linda dadabasu. Lord, you open to me of your good treasure. I want you to, to personify it, personalize it. You open to me of your good treasure. In the work of my hands, in the hands of my work, the fruit of my body, nothing missing, nothing broken, because I'm favored of the Lord. I want you to open your mouth and speak to yourself. Speak to yourself. Speak to yourself. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat of the fruit. Speak to yourself. Take your stand in your inheritance of favor. Take your stand in your inheritance of, of, of favor and abundance. The Lord has said, he will open up you, unto you of his good treasure. There shall be rain in your land. There shall be rain in your land. There shall be rain in your land. Lord, there shall be rain in my land. Because I have not just tasted of your abundance. I am in your abundance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Favor is mine. Because you have opened up to me of your good treasure. You have given me the rain in season. In the name of Jesus Christ. The work of my hands. The work of my hands. The hands of my work. The things that money can buy. And the things that money cannot buy. Are mine for the taking. In the name of Jesus. I am blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed to be a blessing. Everyone around me feels the impact of your abundance upon my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone around me feels the impact of your abundance upon my 
life because I walk in favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, my steps are ordered into favor because God has arisen and had mercy on Zion for the time to favor me. Yes, that time is now. Open your mouth and pray for yourself this afternoon. You have arisen, oh God, to have mercy on us because the time to favor us. Yes, that time is now. Jesus Christ. Let us quickly look at Psalm 66. Psalm 66 verses 10 to 12. I'm reading from the NIV version. It says, for you God has tested us. You refined us like silver you brought us into prison. You laid burdens on our backs. He says, you let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. We've gone through fire and through water. It may not have worked at any point in time. You have caused men to ride over our heads. They've taken us for granted. Things have not worked for us, and we're not sure why. But what the Bible says, it says he refined us. He says, he says, he, you have tested us. You have refined us like silver. You brought us into silver. You laid bodies on our heads. We've gone through fire. We've gone through hell and high water. But the end game is abundance. That's what he's saying. I want you to lift your hands and thank God this afternoon. Say, Lord, it does not matter what I've been through. I've gone through fire and through water. It might not be adding up now, but I know that because you have had mercy on Zion, the time to favor me is now. I have come into my place of abundance. You have brought me to that place where all things are possible unto me. All things are made available unto me. All things are made, uh, all things are, are, are confirmed unto me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I've gone through fire and through water. But it's for a reason, oh God, you have brought me to my place of abundance. You have brought me to my place of abundance. You have brought me to my place of abundance. I am not just at the ankle level. I'm not at the knee level, oh God. I'm not at the waist level, oh God. But the abundance is such that I can swim through. You have brought me to the place of abundance. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands and worship him. I've gone through fire and through water, but he brought me to the place of abundance. You have brought me to the place of rich fulfillment. You have brought me to the place of rich fulfillment. There's rest round about me. There's rest round about me. Nothing missing, nothing broken. I have abundance. Somebody shout, I have abundance. I am in the place of my abundance. You have brought me to a place of abundance. Lift up your hands and worship the Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Receive the praise that is due you. From today, we walk into abundance. The impact is felt for generations to come in the name of Jesus Christ. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are clapping, clap well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so we'll be taking the next confession for today and the final confession for today. And it's the favor of Jesus Christ. Please let's turn our Bibles to Luke 2, verse 52. Are we out there? Okay, I read. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, favor with God and men. Okay, then I'll read the Passion Translation, and it says, And Jesus grew, so did his wisdom and maturity. The favor of men increased upon his life, for he was greatly loved by God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, 
when the favor of Jesus Christ is on your life, it's different from the favor of Abraham or Hester. That's God himself, the favor of God himself. So please repeat these words after me in declaration. Father, I thank you because I have continued to grow in stature and wisdom. As well as in favor with men and with you. You have anointed me with the oil of gladness above my contemporaries. And said to me, I will be your father and you will be my son. Thank you because the heavens have opened over me. And the spirit has descended on me like a dove. For I'm your beloved child. In whom you are well pleased. I'm accepted in the beloved. And as Jesus was, so am I in, those, in this world. God has taken the light in me. And nothing is able to separate me from his love. For I'm one with him and joined to him in spirit. My heart is full of love for my heavenly father. And I've sought him out all day long. My soul always long for him. And my flesh after him. As in a dry and thirsty land. Where there is no water. By favor I've come into deep and intimate, intimate revelation of God's will. For the things he has eaten from the wise and prudent have been shown to the simple at heart. I will walk with the Lord each day and set my affections on heavenly things. Regardless of the pressures of ambition, I have kept my focus on the Most High. For is my contemplation and constant desire. I have lived my life by every word from his mouth. Just like Jesus, God the Father hears me whenever I call. I have come into his kindness that in all things and at all times, according to his will, he hears my cry and answers my request. I have received an assurance that the Lord is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I could ever ask or think. My life bears a harvest of prayers. I'm a full proofs, I'm a full I'm full of proofs and abound in testament of God. I am not tempted beyond what I can bear. For the Lord has made a way of escape for me. As I journey in life, God has built me up with strength in, in my inner man. And I'm fortified with grace. Therefore, I do not fail in the day of adversity. For I'm not a weak specimen. I hold up in persecution or hardship on the way to my purpose, standing tall and finishing strong. The supernatural has become my habitual realm of operation. I accomplish daunting tasks, enjoy unparalleled insight, express the love of God. Perform awesome miracles, defy the hearts, shift ex established frontiers, and gain a loyal following for my father's kingdom. I'm of grace. I'm of grace. I'm of grace. I'm irrepressible and cannot be beaten down. I have worked in victory continually. Triumphing against all odds. 
I win with love every day. For the love of God has guided all my motivation, my intentions, and my actions. In Jesus' name. David said, I rejoice at your word as one who has found a great spoil. So let's rejoice. Let's rejoice at the word of God. Because God is watching over his word to perform it in our lives. Let's give him praise for his word. Because his word will definitely come to pass in our lives in Jesus' name. I had a wonderful time in the word session. Like, God came down and he's still here. Like, he, he prepared a special message for us. And um, thank you, Sister Buki. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to hear what... And there was no cure naturally for him. Because the doctors had told him that, oh, <laughs> sorry, this case is a hopeless one. There's nothing we can do about it. And then they had even told him that before he... That definitely he was going to die. At the, he was going to die young because of that disease he had. And they told him that towards the time that he would really go, like die, that he might begin to have mental issues. So one day he would, God, he had, he had nothing. And he was just on the bed. But he had his grandmother's Bible. And then he started reading. He started reading the Bible. And then he came across Mark 11, 23. That says, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that what you, ha you have asked, you have gotten what you have asked for. And he held on to that scripture. And that was the scripture. He kept saying it, kept saying it, kept saying it. And because the doctors had told him that <laughs> the day you would die, maybe you actually start running crazy. So when he started saying it, he got up from the bed and he was so weak. He got to the living room and he, he kept confessing. And everybody was like, okay, it's like it's time for this guy to die home. Because they said that he would start acting crazy. And then they felt he was really, really crazy because he kept saying the word of God. And guess what? He lived till like about 80, 85 or 7 years. So you see that the word of God works. So you might not see the evidence, but keep saying it. We have to keep saying it, no matter what we see, no matter what the devil is bringing. The Bible says that the word of God is what? It is, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, you know that word, two-edged sword? You know, it was a sword they used to use in the olden days. Now, what do we have? Guns, right? So the word of God is more potent than a gun. Exactly. <laughs> the word of God is more potent than anything you can imagine. Okay, so let's, this is a gift from our president, Pastor Debola Dejikoromi. Use it, use it. I use it. I sit down with it and I say it. I keep saying it. I keep saying it until I see what I want. Because it's been provided for and it is now. Time for salvation is what? Now. 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 Thank you, dear non-DIW members. So, um, I hope that after today's meeting, you would want and like to join us. We have made provision for you. On your way out, you could please um, put down your names if you would like to join DIW. It's always a fun, fun, we always have fun together, praying, enjoying the word of God and um, helping one another to grow stronger. Now, um, we're almost through with this meeting. Uh, on your way out, we have um, a little light refreshment for you. We have apples and water. Please pick as you go out and um, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Um, just um, if you, okay, so it's time for offering. We're going to take our offering now. Um, ushers, please, can you? Yes, the, the offering baskets will go around. And then music, can we please have music, please? Uh, thank you.
Okay, so it's offering time. So sisters, let's give. Give to God. Don't say, ah, I don't have, I don't have. And someone, someone said something that made sense to me a long, long time ago. It says, when you have a seed in your hand and that seed is not enough to eat, what do you do? You sow it. So, make, just make that commitment to, to give to God's work. You alone are worthy, Lord, to be praised and adored. Okay, so we're going to um, pray. It's time to go home. Everything that you have learned here today, please hold on to it. Sit down with the word. Befriend the Holy Spirit afresh. Start all over again in love with the relationship you have with the Lord. Okay, so let's, can we hold our hands across this room?